always hated that song. Alright lads, welcome back to another video, and after a hectic week of changes at my club really, where we had a manager at the start of the last weekend's game, and now we've got a head coach, an assistant coach, a technical support, and a whole new football instructor to go with it, and renewed optimism going into this weekend's game, which actually was the first game of the season, and it was probably the last time that we really saw our team turn on against a team in this league. Obviously so far this week I've spoken a lot about Dunfermline and I think this will be the main week where I've actually spoken about Dunfermline for a lot of months now because there's been a lot that's happened and now this is the pinnacle of it, this fixture this weekend against Dundee United. It's a real test going into the first game for Stevie Crawford and Greg Shields as the new kind of management team but I'm kind of chuffed to see where they'll change the team up, how they'll play the game and how they'll line up and stuff like that. It'll be interesting to see what they go with in their first game as a Dunfermline management duo and then it'll obviously be interesting in the coming weeks to see how they do any sort of dealings in the transfer market, if any. And then it'll obviously be interesting to see what we can do for the rest of the season and what these guys can actually achieve until the summer and then we see what we want to do from there. As I understand, I've kind of tried to understand Jackie McNamara's role a bit more. As you know, he came in as a technical support along with his company Concilium Sports as part of this new regime we're going under. And I've tried to understand it a bit more by getting in touch with somebody that I speak to regularly. And he was basically telling me that Jackie will be in charge of kind of the scouting and kind of dealing with the business side of players so he can, he can recommend players to Stevie Crawford and then obviously they can have a chat about that and then if Stevie wants them as part of the football inside then Jackie will deal with the business side of it. If Stevie knows of a player that he would quite like as part of his team he can obviously recommend it to Jackie but Jackie's role will kind of be recommending players to Stevie Crawford a lot of the time and it doesn't always necessarily have to be deals that he believes have to go through it will just be a case of recommending the players to Stevie and then they have a conversation for there about who's best served to come in and help the team towards whatever goal we're going towards at that point so it's a kind of confusing role for most folk and I think that it has been kind of shadowed over in this whole kind of thing and I think that's probably the key problem with this appointment that we need more clarity on that role and with what I've been told that's a bit more clarity on it it's basically just Jackie help me out with the business side of things when a player's getting scouted and then obviously in talks to come to us Jackie will be dealing with the whole business side of it the contracts negotiations stuff like that because he has more experience in that side of it than Stevie Crawford does Stevie Crawford is obviously dealing with the football side of it and all the ongoings on the pitch and he'll still have a say in what players can come and join in his squad at East End Park. And Jackie McNamara being a sort of consultant role, I think it's a good role to have because he obviously does have more experience in the contract signing side of it. But hopefully it's not that detrimental to the power that Stevie Crawford and Greg Shields have as a management duo in actually managing their own team and bringing in the players that they want to bring in. But back onto this weekend's game coming up, it's a massive game for both sides really because Dundee United have kind of faltered in the league in the last few weeks. I would say in the month of December they didn't exactly have the best time and basically ever since that 5-0 loss to Ayr they've kind of had a bit topsy-turvy form and they kind of feel like they really need January additions to add to their squad. And they've done that so far, I think they've brought in two players, they've brought in Aidan Nesbitt from MK Dons. Robbie Nielsen knows him well. He managed him at MK Dons and aye, he's a decent enough player. I would say he's a bit of a sand dancer type player. I think that's probably the best word to kind of describe the type of player that I think he is anyway. And he'd be, he'll be a tricky player. I would assume that most of the Fallon fans would have taken him at East End Park. But Aidan Nesbitt's obviously seen for Dundee United now. And it'll be interesting to see if he's involved in the starting 11 and what he can bring to their side that wasn't given before by players such as Fraser Aird and Billy King and stuff like that. And then another signing they've made in the attacking areas is Cammy Smith from St Mirren. Now this is a player that I really would have liked at East End Park. I actually thought that if we could have went in for any player in this January window or if he was ever released from St Mirren, I thought we should have been the first ones in there. But of course, Dundee United with their resources, they're most likely to be 
more on top in transfer negotiations than we are just because of the size of club they are and the money they've got and stuff like that. And Cammy Smith has now joined Dundee United. He obviously spent a loan spell there in the past as well. But he's now there on a permanent deal. And it's a big loss for St Mirren in my opinion. Despite the fact that he wasn't getting much game time at St Mirren. He's a fantastic player at championship level. And I mean, if anyone can get 20 plus goals at a Gavin Riley and be assisting him week in week out. Then that's a cracking player in my book. And then the only other kind of transfer news for Dundee United recently has been that they put in a bid for Air United's Liam Smith, their fullback, and we all know what kind of happened with that because Ian McCall of Air United came out with a fantastic statement on their club's website where he was basically slagging off the teams that have been putting in derisory bids for these players and basically showing that he was hell of a pissed off with all the transfer talk and saying that no players would be leaving Somerset Park this summer. Summer. Christ. This January. So that's as far as Dundee United have done so far in this transfer window. <coughs> now, what time do you think this is? Just the two hours after I originally filmed this video, obviously I've just spoken about Dundee United sign-ins. And they've only gone and made another one. So I had to come and refilm this wee bit. They've now signed Morgaro Gomez on a don't know how many year deal. But Robbie Nielsen's made another sign-in and we'll see if he's involved at the weekend. I didn't give a toss about what kind of player he is right now because this bit wasn't even meant to be in the video so cheers for the time in Dundee United. As far as Dunfermline go, no business so far. A lot of business on the management side of it of course and that's been the kind of thing that's overtaken all of our news so far, especially this week of course. And I now think that we'll see how the team goes for the next few weeks and then we will probably bring in one, maybe two players this window. I don't think there's much scope for any movement really, but I do think that we do need one addition at least. And you would argue that that should be a striker. We just need to see what happens in the next few weeks with this new management duo and what they can get out of the crop of players that Alan Johnson couldn't previously. So obviously, the last time in this fixture we came out 3 2 winners. Will that happen again this time? I'm not too sure. You don't know what to expect now at all because of this new management setup coming in and seeing how the players can react to that. So I'm not going to make any sort of prediction this weekend. Delighted if it's a Dunfermline win. Not too fussed if it's a draw. But then I'm also not too fussed if it's a loss either because we need to start just seeing how this team can play under the new management setup and just get behind it 100% till the end of the season and see where it takes us. But aye, that's it for this video guys. Cheers for watching. If you did enjoy, please give it a like. Comment down below your scroll prediction or your whatever you think about the kind of new setup at Dunfermline and how you think that will affect this weekend's game against Dundee United. And subscribe for more of this type of content. The growth on this channel has been unreal in the last 28 days. It's been something like plus 95 subscribers and that's obviously all down to you guys clicking the subscribe button. I do my bit by putting the content out there, but I do heavily rely on you clicking the button that makes it all worth it so thanks very much for that continue into 2019 and i'll be ecstatic coming into the season but until the next video which obviously as you know now will be the match day vlog the big match for tomorrow's game against dundee united i'll see you then cheers guys